Chesh Luja, what's up people? Hola, Vigo's dad here. Welcome to another episode. We are up very early this morning. We are on our way to the Polish consulate here in London because I need visa. We are planning to go to Poland in December for, for Christmas holidays. I am so excited. I haven't been in Poland. Yeah, it's gonna be three years. Uh, this Christmas, can you believe that? Three years without going to my beautiful, uh, you know, second home. Um, I also haven't seen my in-laws, my Polish uh, Regina, in like around a year and a half, almost two years, yeah, something like that. And uh, I also gonna wait to see them and hang out with them. Whoa, it's so windy here. So I have this appointment today, and uh, let's go and see what my beautiful Polish friends from the console that's saying, okay? Let's do it. Yeah, no, it still hasn't. I haven't received it yet. Uh, I'm afraid I cannot assist you today. But this is this is po uh, Polish regulation. No, that's EU regulation. I just came out from the Polish consulate right there. The situation is a little bit complicated because we are, of course, waiting to go to Poland for Christmas, to spend Christmas with with uh, my in-laws, and so far I cannot. But you know what? This is perfect for the storyline of my video because precisely this episode is about achieving the impossible, isn't it? So I'm gonna have to do a little bit of that good old Polish kominovac uh, and uh, see how I can get this visa to go to Poland in Christmas. You know, as a Latino, you get used to having to fight for the things that you want. Our countries are not the easiest countries to deal with, uh, especially things that require paperwork and uh, every, everything is very bureaucratic. I also know of another country that I now call also home, which is Poland, uh, that has a very big bureaucratic process and uh, makes me think, as I'm here standing in front of all these big buildings in London, if uh, Western Europeans know anything about overcoming the impossible. Uh, don't get me wrong, I know they do. Uh, they, have, they have fought their own battles. But today, they have everything kind of under control, at least that's what it seems so. All the systems work. And a great example of that is how here in the UK, the, everything is extremely easy to deal with. Everything is online, everything is done on an application form, takes a few steps and that's it. You get everything you need basically from the comfort of your own home. That's not the case in, uh, in the Dominican Republic. That's not the case in, uh, oh, look at that nice, nice police, little police boat. Pretty cool. You get all that from the comfort of your own home. But that's not the case for, you know, Latin countries. We are trying, we are trying, but we are still not, you know, we're still not there yet. Which gets me thinking about what, what is the effect that this has on, on people like us having to deal every day with, you know, things that come your way that you were not prepared for. Um, and I think it, it, it toughens you up. I know that there's a very famous Polish word called kombinovac and kombinovac is a hard word to try to explain to a foreigner. Uh, it took me a few years to understand for sure, but I think I, I, think I got it down now. Kombinovac is actually combined, combined. Uh, also you have kombinovanie, which is, uh, yeah, um, the linguist will come in and tell us what, what it actually means, but is the act of trying to make the impossible happen. 
And uh, this term, I don't know exactly when it, you know, came to be. Uh, was it because of the co communistic times? I don't know. Was it maybe because of the wars? I don't know. Uh, there seems to be some sort of record of uh, this word Kominovac being used in some documents in the 18th century or something like that. But what I do know is that this word gives meaning to a whole society. And it might have had a slight negative connotation because, you know, Kominovac, you're trying to go against the rules, you, or not really against the rules, but you're trying to find the little open and the little gap to see if you can if you can make something that seems impossible happen. I think that this is something positive. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying to break the rules. Don't break the rules. The rules are there for a reason. Sometimes you have to question a little bit. You have to question authority just slightly, not take you know what has been given to you as, as as a fact you know not accepting the status quo all the time don't break the law i'll repeat that again disclaimer right here don't break the law but also push the boundaries slightly uh, nobody that ever achieve anything big in life no societies that uh, manage to uh, do incredible things for their people did it just because they followed everything you know from a to z so the idea of kominovac to me uh i don't know call me a rebel call me whatever you want is very appealing i've heard countless stories of how difficult things were back in the communistic times where people didn't have their basic needs covered just finding something as simple as bread to feed your family would be very difficult the supermarket aisles were not full with products and, and food. People had to think of creative ways to feed their family, to give them uh, a basic level of comfort. So it became quite normal to you know, get things through a friend or a friend of a friend or a cousin. By the way, I understand this 100% well because in Dominican Republic is the same thing. You always have a friend, you always have an acquaintance that can get you, you know, this or that, uh, maybe cheaper, maybe it's, it's non-existent at all, but there's always someone that can help you get it. Ever since I started living among Polish people, I immediately understood the concept of Kominovac. And not only understood it, but I actually like it. It's a language that I think we both speak. It's a language that I think we both understand. So what is the problem, you ask, and why am, have I not been granted access to go to my second home, Poland? Well, basically, here in the UK, after Brexit, they devised this system called the, the pre-settled and settled status uh, for every European that was living in the United Kingdom. Before Brexit, of course, any European could come here and work here, live here, no issues. But after the, 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 you know, the big B, uh, every European that was here needed to apply for something called pre-settled status. Once they got this, they would have to decide whether they wanted to continue living in the UK and then apply for a settled status or just go back home or go to another country. As a non-European uh, citizen, if you are married to one, you are entitled for such privileges like pre-settled status and I applied for mine back in August but I still haven't gotten an answer so what they said was that the European Union law uh, mandates that no visa can be granted to someone that doesn't have pre-settled status or settled status I have to wait for them to finish processing my application so that I can uh, get Polish visa um, it's complicated because I already have tickets to go to Poland on the 30th of the December. So I believe we're going to have to come in over. If I'm going to try to find some sort of logic into this whole storyline, basically what I mean to say is that for you to achieve the impossible, sometimes you have to come in over. Well, I've been thinking about it and 
I cannot seem to come with a quick solution on how I'm going to be able to get into Poland for Christmas. Boom! That's all, guys. That's the end of the episode. I hope you liked it. I did not like how this episode ended. I was supposed to have my visa ready. But um, I just have to think. I have to think creatively. Uh, I have a... Uh, I think I'm gonna have to go to South Africa to solve this one. But stay tuned and in the next few episodes maybe we will get a definite answer of what is gonna happen. Guys, stay safe. Remember, a little coming over, she's okay. See you soon. Adios.